I'll start, guys. Yes, okay. teacher. Good. Okay. Good evening, Tangent Club India International President and Past President Tangent India Jayashri Chaudhary, Forty One India President Shrinivasu Saraswatula, Tangent India President Nalini Prasad, Past Presidents, Office Bearers, Members of TCI Forty One India and Tangent India, and mm -hmm. many many other people who have logged in from all corners of India and some from across the globe. It is really heartwarming to see so many people who have joined in today. Your presence enriches our discussions and brings diverse perspectives to this session. Let's embark on this virtual journey into Swar Yoga, the science of breath together. Let's explore the rhythm of your breath as we delve into this ancient practice of self-discovery and well-being. Let's breathe and learn together. A few formalities before we begin. I request our Tangent International President, Jeshri, to say a few words. Uh, thank you. Actually, um, it's an honor to address you all as the Tangent International President. But before anything, let me tell you all, I'm first Tangent India, and then I will go overseas. Breathing. I just took a deep breath. It's a natural action when we all take a deep breath before we start anything, whether it's starting a race or plunging into a pool or even before kneeling to propose to my beloved or even when I pick up the pen to start writing my exam. We all start with a deep breath because breathing is so vital to our lives. It is so vital to our well-being. It gives us enhanced oxygen supply. It helps us with stress management. It brings in an energy balance. It brings in a mind and body coordination. It does so much to all of us today that we are living with each other. We are all breathing. We take it for granted. But I'm, you know, though we take it for granted, it is that breath that we take before we do anything like the deep breath I took before I said, let me address all of you. I'm so glad, Bijal, that you have put this together. You found Swati. We have known Swati from many, many years. And we know the spiritual being that she is and the kind of learnings that we've had from her. Thank you, Bijal, for bringing this. Thank you, Tangent India, for bringing this to everybody. I can only wish you all the best for better breath, for better lives ahead. Congratulations and all the best. Thank you, Jayashree. May I request 41 India President Srini to say a few words? Uh, thank you very much, uh, you know, Bezel. Uh, 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 41 ers uh, tangents, uh, tablers, circlers, friends, uh, I bring you warm greetings uh, from 41 India. Um, uh, it's it's great to see uh, uh, Tangent International President uh, uh, Jayashree and Tangent India President Nalini and all of you here uh, in this beautiful program. Uh, breath is actually a proof of our life, uh, but we do it so uh, unconsciously. From an unconscious breathing to move to a conscious breathing and, and from just being alive to becoming alive, and uh, doing all this from a space of awareness, this is a journey that we need to take. And this is the journey that perhaps today Swati will help us embark on. And uh, with her deep understanding of Swab Yoga and uh, also making it easy for us to both understand the science behind it and put it to implementation in our life and lead a better life uh, in more ways than one. And uh, I also bow to all the Rishis and Munis who have actually put all this thousands of years and now we along with the entire world are actually discovering it to lead a better life. So thank you, Bijal. Thank you, uh, President Nalni and everybody at Tangent India in putting this program together. Swati is a very dear friend and really a realized soul and, uh, <clears throat> and so happy to see her uh, do more of these programs uh, for all of us. Thank you. And I join all of you as a student today to learn uh, 
uh, in the on this journey. Thank you very much, and I bring you warm greetings from uh, the National Board and the floor of Forty One India. Thank you very much. Thank you, Shrini. I now request Tangent India President Nalini to say a few words. Thank you, Bijal. Uh, dear friends, good evening. A uh, hearty welcome to one and all present here. It's very nice to see this international forum with international members, national members, 41ers, tangents, and all other friends. Uh, just a single thought is capable of changing a breathing pattern. Breath is a very important and crucial part of an individual's life. Only when you breathe, you are alive. Breathing is an involuntary action. A heartfelt gratitude to you, to you, dear Swati, for being gracious enough to conduct this workshop for the entire country. I welcome you, Swati, to this forum where we have Tangent International and for and with no further delay, I hand over the proceedings to be back. Thank you so much for joining us here and giving us this informative program, Swati, to bring positive changes for a better living in all our lives. And Bijal, thank you for putting everything together. I know how much you've had, uh, it, this happened for the last one week, how much was happening, I know. And Swati, thank you so much. In spite of all your health reasons and everything, you have uh, made it positive today. And thank God for that, uh, for bringing you uh, to us here as planned. Thank you so much, Swati. On to you. Thank you, Nalini. Thank you, Nalini. Now, before um, we start the program, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker, Swati. Swati Anurag Mehra is a science postgraduate with a master's in botany from Jodhpur University. It was in 2008 that the universe decided to change her course of life and the world of occult opened up to her and from there, a truly transformative journey began. She is a past life regression therapist, a dream analyst. She has pursued a five-year course in dream analysis from Canada. In fact, during COVID, if you remember, she had conducted an amazing session on dream analysis for Tangent India. She is a numerologist, a GIFT, G-I-F-T counselor. GIFT stands for Genius Identification Fingerprint Test Counselor. She's an EFT practitioner, a bark flower therapist. She decodes the symbolic language of the universe and she is a Swar Yogi. As you can see, our guest speaker here is a holistic practitioner, a soul alchemist working on mind, body and soul through various modalities to bring out profound healings at multiple levels of one's being. She was the Charter Secretary of Surat Lady Circle 72, Lady Circle Area Chairperson Area 3, and now a member of Tangent 32 Surat. She's married to 41er Anurag Mehra, has a daughter Tanisha who's married now and lives in Noida, and son Apurva who has done law and is now running his own digital marketing agency in Mumbai. Swati also gives honorary service at the family court in Surat as a conciliator. On behalf of all the participants present here today, I welcome you here, Swati. Since the last few days, Swati and her husband both were really unwell, down with 102 fever, cold, cough, body ache. We almost had to cancel today's session, but Swati decided to go ahead and using this practice and the power of breath, she is here today with us. A small request to all the participants, Please do not ask questions while the PowerPoint presentation is going on and do not interrupt the proceedings. Keep yourselves muted. You can type in your questions in the chat box or ask them later on at the end of the session. Thank you in advance for your understanding. I now request Swati to start the session on Swar Yoga. The floor is all yours, Swati. Thank you. Thank you, Bijil. Thank you, President Nalini. 
Thank you, President Srini. Thank you, President Jayashri. It's a pleasure to be here today. But before we begin with this sacred and secret signs of breath, may I, all may I now request all of you to please take off your footwears because this is a very ancient, very sacred learnings that we'll be learning today. So good evening, everyone. It's a pleasure and privilege to be here today to share this life transformative knowledge with each one of you present so as to bring to you an awareness of how our breath flows and how once we understand the flow of breath, we get the magical key to transforming our own lives. We've been breathing every moment, every seconds of our lives. But have we been consciously breathing? No. It's just that the flow is there. We keep breathing. We live. We do our daily tasks. But are we in tune with our breath? Rarely. So today's session will help us to understand the science of nasal breathing. How to utilize this awareness of breath in application in our daily lives to transform our lives. I would like to express my heartfelt gratitudes to my gurus and mentors, Dr. Rajendra Jain and Sri Suresh Patel for imparting this sacred knowledge. And in this moment, may we just close our eyes and bow down, our, bow down and pray to the Adi Guru, Lord Shiva himself to shower his blessings and may we all make our lives richer through this session today. Thank you. So about the now let us talk a little about the origin of Swar Yoga. So Swar Yoga is an ancient science which involves the systemic study of the breath flow through the nostrils or the swars. The Swar Yoga teachings comes from Shiv Swarodaya. It was first taught by Lord Shiva to Goddess Parvati. The teachings are in the form of a dialogue between Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati, where Lord Shiva himself says that in all the seven lokas of planes or consciousness, there is no greater understanding or no greater knowledge than Swar Yoga. Through the knowledge of Swar Yoga, one becomes free from all kinds of negative influences of one's destiny and can achieve heightened awareness. The text describes that Swar Yoga is useful for the transformation of a life and knowing how to perform various activities based on breath, nostrils and energy. Here Shiva is the guru one who dispels the darkness and represents the pure cosmic consciousness, while Parvati represents the individual jiva or consciousness. Inhalation is perceived as Parvati or Shakti and exhalation is seen as Shiva or the divine consciousness. Through the awareness of Swar or breath, we can attain oneness or union of Shiva Shakti or the individual and cosmic consciousness. So we all know that the, at the level of energy, we are all uh, particles of God. Each one of us carries that God particle. So once we are aware of the breath, we can connect to that God particle. We can get a connection 
from within the God particle to the divine consciousness. So as the slide reads, Swar Yoga is an ancient esoteric science, comes from Shiv Swarodaya, which is a dialogue between Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati. It originates in the Tantras. It's a science of breath. So now, the next slide says, what is Swar Yoga? So the word Swar in Sanskrit means, we, when we uh, think of the word Swar, we imagine it to be a musical note. Generally, when we talk about Swar, we have to say that the first thing that comes to our mind is a musical note. Hai. But Swar in context of Swar Yoga means the awareness of the continuous flow of air through nostrils and its nature. Yoga means union. So Swar Yoga is the science which is about the realization of cosmic consciousness through the awareness, observation, followed by control or manipulation of the flow of breath in the nostrils. Swar is the silent language of the soul and when you tune into it, the mysteries of the universe unfold. Swar Yoga is one of the most wonderful tool for transforming our lives. Once we understand the magic of breath, then we have the key to unlock life's enigmas. Shadi 15, 16, say it. 22nd, say it. 24th, Shadi. You all mute yourselves, please. Yeah, Bezal, okay, if you make me also co-host, I can uh, I can manage this. I'm trying to see who it is. Yeah, is yeah I, I'm 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 doing it. I'm also doing. Um, I'm also. Jayashree, can you make uh, Shrini also co-host? Yeah, I've muted him, and I'll do it. I'll... Sorry, Swati, please carry on. No, no, no worries. So. I think all of us have understood what is Swarogya. Do you want me to go back to the slide and explain this again? No, we can carry on. Okay. The next slide, please. So what is the, now the difference between Swar Yoga and Pranayam? When we think of Swar Yoga, we feel it is very similar to Pranayam. Can I have the next slide, please? But basically... Pranayam and Swar Yoga are two very different things. So Swar Yoga is, emphasizes the application of breath and the significance of different pranic rhythms and understanding their effect on body and mind. Whereas Pranayams are techniques used to strengthen, purify and balance the nadis. So the different patterns of breath, either in the right, left or both the nostrils, influence our worldly affairs either positively or negatively. It also influences the spiritual aspect of our life. So there is always a plus and a minus to everything that we experience in life. So even the patterns of the flow of breath can have a positive influence and can have a negative influence. So once we are aware of the different pranic flows and the patterns, we will only go in for the positive aspects of it and tend to avoid what negativity can be experienced. Swaryog deals with the interaction between the cosmic rhythm and individual pranic patterns and each person. We may not be aware of it, but there is a definite pattern of breath that flows through each one of us, which is in alignment with the cosmic flow. So as we have the different tithis and the paksh as per the Hindu lunar calendar, every morning the breath has to flow from a particular nostril. From the shukl paksh, first, second, third, it is the chandraswar, followed by three days of uh, suraswar. So there is a definite pattern of breath that is there in the universe. If we are in tune with the universal flow, 
if we have our chakras right, we will be in tune with the universal flow of breath. If not, our breath patterns will change. So different pranic rhythms and patterns alter the, alter the state of consciousness at all levels, which may be conscious, subconscious and unconscious, and we can experience them in our daily lives. The linking force between the individual body, which is the pind, and the cosmic body, the Brahman, is the breath. So when we take birth, generally we say what we have come to, what we have come to, but do you think life can exist without breath? No. So we come with our breaths. We come with our breaths. So when we take breath, the first thing through which we start our life is breath. And from then on until we die, we breathe continuously. In the moment of our first inhalation, the arrangement of cosmic energies, the planets, constellations, etc., create an archetype of our whole life. That first breath makes the blueprint of your life with the placement of planets and the associated all the cosmic energies. The breath is a cosmic energy. The body comes from the mother's womb. But where is the breath coming from? The cosmos. So the breath is the cosmic energy, which emanates not from the mother's womb, but from the cosmos. Swar Yog places emphasis on the first breath of life because it activates elements which are dominance in one's life. Similarly, the last breath of our life activates elements which are responsible for reincarnation and for experiences on a different on different astral planes. All of us know that we will reincarnate. We've all known that there is a uh, process of reincarnation that we go through. This life is not our first life and the coming life will not be our first life, nor is this life our last life. We will keep incarnating till we master our lessons. And the in the moment of death, what uh, breath is flowing, the element in the breath will decide our future incarnations. Next slide, please. The Nadi system. The previous one. Thank you. So what are Nadis? Nadis are subtle energy channels through which prana or life energy flows. Nadis are not visible to us. They are there. Just as the physical veins carry blood through our circulatory system, the Nadis are subtle channels that carry energy through our being. There are 72,000 72, Nadis that flow through the body. Of these three are the most important. All of us have experienced acupressure at some point in time. We press a point here and a pain here dissolves. Why is that? Because when we press a point here, the particular nadi gets activated and the blockage in that nadi is cleared and the pain, then the resultant pain which was caused due to that blockage is released. So there are three major nadis, the Ida nadi, Pingla nadi, and the Sushumna Nadi. These three major rivers crisscross, as you can see in the diagram, these three major rivers crisscross around each other to create a beautiful double hallux pattern. They begin at the base of the spine, the Muladhar, and go up to the central axis of the spine. Now let us study the Nadis in a little detail. Next slide, please. Ida Nadi. Ida Nadi begins at the base of the spine and then runs up the central axis of the spine, crisscrossing over the Sushumna at major chakras and eventually terminates in the 
left nostril. So Ida Nadi is terminating into the left nostril. Ida, now left side is our feminine side. And right side is our masculine side. So Ida is associated with the lunar sides of our body and our beings. It is the yin sign that is considered to be softer, darker, more feminine, more mysterious because it terminates in the left nostril. It is also associated with right brain dominance, which leans towards creativity and artistry. Next slide, please. Pingla. We need to go back. Pingla. So Pingla Nadi also begins at the base of the spine, at the root chakra. It then runs up the central column, just like Ida. Both the uh, Nadis run simultaneously in a crisscross pattern. It then runs up the central column of the spine, crisscrossing around Sushumna and Ida Nadi at every major chakra. Pingla eventually terminates in the right nostril. This channel is associated with the solar sides of our body and our beings. It is the yang side that is considered to be stronger, lighter, masculine and more obvious. Because it terminates in the right nostril, it is also associated with left brain dominance which leans towards analytical and methodical thinking. Now, next, Sushumna. Sushumna is considered to be the most important energy channel within the body. This central channel runs from the base of the spine to the crown of the head along the central axis of the core. In this, the airflow is felt in both the nostrils. Next slide, please. Now we come to the three swars. Swar Yoga explains three swars or breathing patterns. As we learnt earlier, that swar is, swar means the flow of breath in the nostrils. So there are three types of swars. <clears throat> Pingla Nadi or the Surya Swar. When the flow of breath is experienced in the right nostril, you are said to be in the Chandra Swar. When the breath breathing is dominantly through the left nostril, it is the Chandraswar. And when both the nostrils are flowing, it is said to be that Sushumna is flowing. Clear everybody? The Chandraswar and the Suryaswar. Suryaswar is when the right nostril is flowing. Chandraswar is when the Left nostril is flowing. So Shumna is when both the nostrils are flowing. So now next is how nostrils work. I mean, like that, we have both. Yeah. Nostrils. Me, I mean. We usually feel that when we are breathing, we are breathing from both the nostrils, but that is not so. At any given point of time, breath flow is from only one nostril. When the flow of breath is changing from the other, from one to the other, it is felt in both the nostrils. And then again, 
the predominant flow becomes in one of the nostrils and the nostrils change air flow every 60 to 80 minutes from left to right and right to left. Inhalation is known as sagun. Exhalation is known as nirgun. When the flow, flow is changing from one nostril to the other, for three to four minutes, sushumna is activated. It is said that in the 24-hour cycle, for three hours, sushumna stays active. Next, characteristics of swar. As we have already learned, let us just go through the left nostrils first. Left nostril is the iranari, more associated with mental energy. Moon, it is cold because it is in the left side. The female, term right brain, relaxation and is considered auspicious. Any auspicious works that we do should be done when the left nostril is flowing. Right nostril is the pingla nadi. It is more associated with physical energy. So any work which requires physical energy and stamina are done when the right nostril is flowing. Just as the left nostril was moon oriented, this is sun oriented. This is hot in nature, male, left brain. Where is the left nostril or the chandraswar gives us relaxation? Right nostril gives us the stress response, the fight or flight responses that we've heard of. And right nostril ka jab flow hota hai, you work, uh, you do activities which are hard, tough and not so virtuous. We'll take the questions at the end of the session. So now we've studied theoretically about the swords. Now let us do a little exercise how to identify your swords. Join your palms in a namaste mudra. Put them under the nostril and take a deep breath and give it a deep exhale. See which side of the palm do you feel the breath? So now can you identify this breath? Ident now you've all identified your swar, the flowing swar in this moment. Good. So the next time that you are doing activities, you will analyze your breath. And then perform the various activities that we will now talk of. You, Archana, the Sushumna is flowing. Wish for anything that you wish for in this moment. Shall you next slide? So now, what are the activities that are prescribed under the Chandraswar? So when the next, uh, when the left nostril is flowing, the activities that you should be doing is uh, taking admission into schools, colleges. Uh, sleeping is always advisable when the left nostril is flowing. Initiating friendships, stepping out for interviews, practicing music, business initiations, intake of liquids, weddings should be performed in the Chandraswar. You know, 
जो वैदिक रीति रिवाज से जब शादी होती है तो जो इतना मंत्रोच्चार किया जाता है दैट इज टू एक्टिवेट द फ्लो ऑफ चंद्रेश्वर सो दैट वेडिंग्स लास्ट एनीथिंग दैट यू डू एनीथिंग एनी वर्क दैट यू नीड स्टेबिलिटी इन शुड बी इनिशिएटेड इन द चंद्रेश्वर सूर्यस्वर एज द नेम इंडिकेट्स इज वॉट अग्नि heat so if a relationship has too much of heat too much too many arguments will it last no so for any relationships any neg- uh, contracts that you are signing they all of these should be done in the chandraswar wearing new clothes should always be done in the chandraswar ideally put the left arm first inside the garment and then wear it house warmings grah pravesh jisko hum kehte hain grah pravesh house warmings should be done in the chandraswar urination should always be done in the chandraswar when you are giving urine samples for blood uh, for lab tests close the right nostril and collect the sample the reports are always different when the urine sample is given in the chandraswar and the suryaswar when you are giving the sample in the chandraswar the reports are always accurate when you are taking oath at office for all the incoming presidents when you are taking oath at office do it in the chandraswar long distance travels do it in the chandraswar when you are uh, when the children are beginning with their education initiate the education in the chandraswar next slide please suryaswar activities sports as i earlier said suryaswar is the physical energy so any activity that requires physical work or you need conviction or you need to convince the other do it in the arguments arguments mein aapko kya chahiye you need energy so arguments to be done in the suryaswar sports interview now you will say it is this confusing ki you have already mentioned stepping out for interviews in the chandraswar yes you are when you leave home okay. for an interview step out of the house in the chandraswar but when you are entering into the interview room room change the nostril change the swar and enter the interview room with the suryaswar sale purchases are always to be done in the suryaswar business dealings meals should be taken in the suryaswar because surya is what fire it will aid in metabolism creative writing litigation taking medicines surgery donations excretions taking shower trekking all of these should be done in the suryaswar clear everybody now what is to be done in the sushumna during the time when both the nostrils are flowing no worldly activities should be performed when the sushumna is flowing meditation puja should be done just as i said uh some time back when archana wrote ki both are flowing and i asked make a wish and you will manifest it so even we have heard it din mein ek bar saraswati zarur aati hai that is the time when the sushumna is flowing and if you say anything in that moment it gets manifested so you need to be very very cautious of what you speak what you think because if the sushumna is flowing you will manifest be it good bad ugly so be very careful when the sushumna is flowing in the ancient in the ancient days we've seen rishi munis giving vardans and abhishaps so vardans and abhishaps were given when the sushumna was flowing next now how do we apply this knowledge of swar yoga in our daily lives 
it will take a little time to be aware of the breath flow and to check the nostril before doing certain aspects. But as you practice, it will take not days, but months and years. But slowly, the consciousness gets so into flow with the various activities that when, when we are to perform a particular activity, the flow starts automatically from that particular nostril. So eat meals when the right nostril is flowing. Drink water, liquids when the left is flowing. Sleep on the left side post meals. It helps in digestion of the food. When you leave home for work or any work, step out with the foot corresponding to the active nostril. Now, how does this help? Your body has a, its own energy mandala. The outer area of your house has its own energy mandala. So when you're putting with the active foot forward, you are coming in harmony with that mandala of the outside energy. So when the two energies are in harmony, will it create a clash or will it support? It will support. So anything that you want to do, you are in tune with the cosmic energies. Moreover, what do we say when we die? There is no breath. Jab hamari saas ukhad gai, to hamari mrityu hui. At the time of death, when we are dead, there is no breath in the body. So the part of the body which is corresponding to the inactive side is dead in that moment. Will it have any energy to perform any work? No. Similar, and on the other side, if we are putting that foot, which is active, which is flowing, which is full of life, will we not get uh, success? We will. So that is why when you are leaving home, put the active foot forward. Active foot forward means the foot which is corresponding to the active nostril. Start a long journey when the left nostril is flowing. Sometimes we go to a party or we go to somebody's home and we went with too much of expectations. We anticipated having a good time. But the moment you are there, you are not enjoying yourself. Why does this happen? Because you entered the premises with the wrong foot. So the next time, be very careful. You leave the home with the active foot. You enter the home, the place or the premises with the active foot so that you are again in tune with the cosmic energies and the mandala the, and the energy mandala of that place. During the day, left nostril dominance is auspicious and at night, right nostril flow is favorable for good health and longevity. Public speaking, studying and learning are favorable when the night nostril flows. When you're taking or making phone calls, take it from the active hand. Active hand again is the side of the hand, is the hand from which the nostril is flowing. Bathing is preferred in Suryaswar. If hot water, then Chandraswar. If cold, then Surya. In case of insomnia, Sleep on the side which the nostril is flowing. The slides are not moving. Huh. Can you ask Anurag to have a look at it? Yeah. Because these points are not on the slides anymore. Which slides are you seeing? Application in daily life? Yeah, that's the one we are seeing. Huh. It has but, nine points. Yeah. yeah, it has nine points. There are two or three extra points that I'm mentioning. Yes, okay. Huh. So in case of insomnia, sleep on the side on which the nostril is flowing. So what? how will that help is, it will help you calm down. And once you calm down, you will automatically fall into sleep. Jewelry, if you're wearing, wear it on the Chandraswar, beginning with the left side. 
then new clothes are also to be worn in the Chandraswar on Monday. And for any activities of uh, worldly matters, Sushumna should be avoided. If we travel, accident probability of accidents. If marriage, probability of divorce. Products, if purchased, will not function well and medicines will not be effective. So Sushumna is to be avoided at all cost for any worldly activities. Sushumna ke vakt hume puja karni hai, meditation karna hai. Thik hai? Chaliye, next slide. Now how to optimize health with swar? To maintain health, balance both the nostrils because the body needs hot and the body needs cold. Relaxation bhi chahiye. And it needs the fire also to perform the various activities. Agar fire nahi hoga, to digestion impaired ho jayega, which will again cause a lot of issues. Stress, if you're experiencing stress, balance both the nostrils. Balancing both the nostrils means activating the sushumna, which is done by meditations or some mantra jap or whatever. But basically, meditation and pranayam are the two practices through which you can elevate stress. Depression and anxiety activate more right nostril. Anger and aggression. Anger and aggression is what? Fire. So what will you do? You will activate the left nostril. If a cold is coming, you get that feeling. So what will you do? You will activate the right to activate the fire energy. Migraine. If you feel that the migraine is coming, change the nostril. Heat stroke. Then switch on the left nostril. And for optimum health, place your tongue on the palate for 30 minutes every day. 5 5 minutes ke gap mein kar lije, 10 minutes kar lije, 30 minutes kar lije. If you're watching TV, if you're doing anything which uh, does not make you, um, which does not require you to talk, just put your tongue on the palate and let it be. Next slide, please. Now, steps to maximize the day's potential. How do we maximize the day's potential using the awareness of breath? So if you are in tune with the cosmic energies, the moment you wake up, half of the day, half of the issues are sorted because you are in tune with the cosmic energies. Your day is sorted. So how do we, how do, we do that? As soon as we wake up, we express gratitude. Then we... Put up arms like this. If you know the mantra, Karagre Vaste Lakshmi, you can chant that. If not, women will kiss the left hand. Men will kiss the right palm. Then check the flow of breath. Turn as per the flow of breath. Right, if the right nostril is activated. Left, if the left nostril is activated. Then Inhale, make a wish, put the active foot down, then exhale. And once you are into the washroom, excretion in the Sureswar and urination in the Chandraswar. Clear everybody? Start with this and you will see a lot of changes in your life, a lot of little, little minor obstacles that come will vanish. Pati, can you repeat this whole process again, please? Yes. So as soon as you wake up, open up, open on up, upon opening your eyes, express gratitude for a beautiful day that has been given to you. Put your palms like this. Do the mantra. Karagre Vaste Lakshmi. Kar Madhe Saraswati. Karmule Govindam Prabhatam Tu Gardarshanam. This is how you will look at your palms and say this. If not, you women will kiss their left palm, men will kiss their right palm, 
you will check the flow of nostril. Turn your face towards the side. If the right is active, you will turn your face towards the right side. If the left is active, you will turn the face towards the left side. Then exhale, then inhale. And upon inhalation, you can make a wish. Then put the active foot down, followed by the inactive and exhale. Clear? Can we move on to the next slide now? Yeah. Now, sleep is one of the major issues in our lives that we are experiencing these days. So once you go to the bed, lie down flat on the back in Shavasana. This will relax the muscles. Then turn towards the left. Sleeping on the left will activate the Sureswar. This prevents heart attacks, digestive, digestive issues and respiratory disorders. And when sleep eludes, sleep on the active side. Okay. There is one more uh, thing that you can do, which is not a part of the Swar Yoga, but it really helps to sleep. This is from the Marm Therapy. You can rub your wrists like this. This also aids in sleeping. There is also a frequency which you can note down, which also helps him to sleep. 8142543. Clear? Next slide, please. What do we do with this number? You just chant this number, number by number. 8142543. 8142543. So this number helps to uh, cut down the thought patterns that are continuously going into your mind. It is because of the uh, uh, thought uh, loop of thoughts that we can't sleep. Uh, this is to be said in English or Hindi or English, English eight one four two five four three. Oh. Okay, successful meetings. Swar for business. Previous slide, please. Hmm. This is the one. So, initiate new business in Chandraswar. Leave home for work in Chandraswar. Enter the lift with Chandraswar. When I say with Chandraswar, means mm -hmm. you have to enter mm -hmm. the lift with your left foot forward. Okay? Enter the work premises with the left foot forward in Chandraswar. Sales and purchases are to be done in the Suryaswar. Now, if you have to go for an important meeting, this is not a part of the slide, this is I'm just explaining. Successful meetings. If there is a meeting that is very important to you that day and you have to attend that meeting, so what you will do is, before leaving from home, Inhale and visualize that person. You will close your eyes, inhale and bring that bring the image of that person in your mind's eye. Do this 27 times. When stepping out, put the active foot forward, inhale 
and put the active foot forward. When reaching the meeting premises, put the active foot forward. And once you enter and you are in meeting with that person, keep the person on the side of the active flow. So if your right nostril is flowing, keep him on the right. If the left nostril is flowing, keep him on the left. Clear it? So I'll explain it once again. If you have a very important meeting, before leaving from home, inhale and visualize that person in your mind's eye. Do this 27 times. When stepping out, put the active foot forward on an inhale. When reaching the meeting premises, put the active foot forward. Once you enter, keep the person on the side of the active flow. When you keep the person on the side of the active flow, there is a chances of the person getting convinced is higher. Next slide, please. Now, swar for manifestations. I've already told you to uh, uh, told uh, make uh, told you a manifestation technique, which was about inhaling the wish. The first, with the first foot on the ground. Now, this is another manifestation technique. What you will do is, you will take a white or a yellow paper. The ink should be green or red. And then write five wishes that you wish to manifest. But keep them realistic. Then after you've written all the five wishes, draw a border around them. Now keep this list in your pocket. Then take out the list with your active hand. Twice or thrice. Inhale. Hold the breath. Read the list. And visualize its manifestation. And then exhale. Then thank the God and the goddesses with a short prayer. Here I prefer to thank the Kuldevi and the Kuldevta because the Kuldevi and the Kuldevta are our links to gods and goddesses. So if you know of your Kuldevi and the Kuldevta, make this small prayer to them. Once one wish manifests, tear the list. Make another one with the five wishes and repeat. Now this process is done ideally in the Shukla Paksh. First, second, third day of the Shukla Paksh or the seventh, eighth, ninth Tithi. Preferable weekdays are Monday, Wednesday, Thursdays and Fridays. Clear everybody? Can we move on to the next? Yes, yes. Now, we have read so much that we have to do this in the left and right. But then how do we change the swar? Because if we have to eat and the chandra swar is activated, then we cannot keep on waiting for the flow to change. So there have, there have to be certain techniques with which we can change the swar. So these are the four ways through which we can change the swar. Put a cotton ball in the active nostril. That will change the swar in some time. Closing the active nostril and breathing deeply from the inactive one. Then lying down method is the, uh, lie down on the active side and the other will start flowing. Or pressure on the armpit. So, you will put your hand under the armpit. And in some time, the flow will change. It takes usually 20 minutes with this method. Clear? Can you do it again? Can I what again? 
show how this is done. Huh. So you will just put your hand under the armpit on the active side. If the left nostril is flowing and you want the right one to flow, you will put your hand under the left armpit and the right nostril will start flowing within 20 minutes. Then the last slide for the day, introduction to tattvas. So in every flow, when the breath is flowing, there are five elements in the breath. So this is again a very elaborate topic. Today I'm just mentioning it in the slide. So if, uh, the work that we do should be done in the earth and the water element when the earth and water element are flowing in the uh, breath. So all you have to do is, because it's a very elaborate thing, just check till where the breath is flowing. If it is 12 fingers down, it is the earth element. If it is 16 fingers down, it is the water element. Do the particular uh, activities only when the flow of breath is in these elements. Clear? So now, as we conclude this session, few pointers to end with. Anytime you wish to convince somebody, a friend, colleague, spouse, employee, house help, keep that person on the active side. Children, when they sit to study, ask them to check the nasal flow. If right, ask them to study. Because we have studied physical and more of mental energy. So difficult subjects like maths and science are to be studied when the right nostril is flowing. And if left, ask them to study uh, the languages and creative subjects. Evening Sandhi Kal, jo sham ka time rehta hai, us time pe not to study. Food should not be consumed from 11.40 a.m. to 12.20 p.m. because that is the time of the flow of Sushumna. I think that is it for today. It is uh, Any questions of Swati? Please do type it on the chat box. Uh, Swati, there were a few questions uh, which were there on the chat box. Mm -hmm. uh, share a little more about next birth. Reincarnation. Let's do one more session on reincarnation. Reincarnation is such a uh, huge topic. So, uh, next birth. So, what, every birth is in continuation of our previous birth. We are a sum total of all our memories, of all the lives that we have lived. So when a soul crosses over, so now when we when I do a past life regression, I'll tell you how a past life regression message when we reincarnation, ke liye aate hai, to kis se hota hai? So once the soul crosses over, it goes to a healing space and then there are learning schools. Jaise, it, on earth we have schools, there we have, there also there are schools which we go to learn and master. So when the soul is ready to reincarnate, just as we have, uh, 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 what do I say? So there are, uh, just give me a moment to get my words right. So there are couples who are ready to be parents. 
and the soul has its own lessons to learn. So there is a matching done in the parallel realms that through this, through this set of parents, I can learn my next life lessons well. So the matchings are done when the mother conceives. The soul has not entered the fetus yet. So the soul comes and be with the parents and sees whether it, this set of parents will be the right set of parents for me to learn whatever I wish to learn. Once the matching is done, once the soul is satisfied, the soul enters at sometimes around three months of fetal age or sometimes later depending upon the soul wish. And it is not always that the soul lives within the mother's womb. The soul keeps coming, going, coming, going. And that is how your guides in the parallel realms help you to decide what you wish to master in this lifetime. When we die and when we go up, an analysis of our life is done. Ki hum jo life lessons lekar aaye the, did, were we able to master all those life lessons or not? What were your greatest disappointments? What were your greatest uh, achievements? All of that is done. And whatever is left unfinished, you will again come with those life lessons. That is why it is said that if you are given an opportunity to rise above your difficulties, your difficult relationships, work upon them, because that is a pattern. The more you avoid, the more you experience them. What you resist, you will persist. So running away is not an op uh, option. Either you cleanse the karmas in this lifetime or you will come back again. With the similar, even if you see your life, until and unless you've mastered a lesson, you will keep, you will, uh, keep on seeing a repetition of the life experiences and the patterns that you've been experiencing. So the only way to move forward is to work upon your karmas Get out of the state of victimhood. Hamare liye sabse easy kya hota hai? To be a victim of circumstances. Oh, mere saath aisa ho gaya. Yeah. I think it's going to be a, a long... It's going to be a very <laughs> so long thing. So let's yeah. discuss... Uh... One, one, one question, Swati, Swati, on this, please. Yes. You know, no soul will want to be an animal. Yet we say there are 84 lakh uh, incarnations before you get the human form. Yes. So why will a soul choose to be an animal? Or those 84 lakhs? I don't think the soul has the choice. No, no, no. The soul does not have a choice. It is a process of soul growth. We all begin our life from a grain of sand. We've lived each life. We've been unicellular animals, we've, organisms, we've been multicellular, we've been all animals. And that is why we have those tendencies within us. In yeah. percentages. So as you evolve on your soul path, you rise up in your chakras. I think let's not get in there because this is a, a very, very intense conversation. You have spoken about active side and actions to be taken accordingly. But yes. the swars are crisscrossing. So how is it relevant? As in? Uh, I think, Jayashree, you've asked this question. I asked this question. Yeah. You know, yeah. you have said that we will step in using the active side or we will start a meeting with the active side. Yes. Now, our swar, it's in the DNA formation, right? It is going from left to right. The... No, no. All you have to see in that moment is which nostril is flowing. Yeah. So 60 to 80 minutes, one nostril will flow. And then it will change. Yeah, but then that's... 80 part... minutes, is it? 60 yeah. to 80 minutes. Yes. Okay. So 60 to 80 minutes, the left nostril is flowing. So the for that 60 to 80 minutes, the left nostril is the active nostril. 
But now, if you have to enter somewhere with the right nostril, what you will do is, you will change the swar. Yeah, but you know, you're saying it's crisscrossing, right? No, it's not crisscrossing. Your swar, the nadis are crisscrossing. Nadis are crisscrossing. But the swar is, okay. The swar is constant for 60 to 80 minutes. <clears throat> okay. Okay. The nadis are crisscrossing at major chakras. Okay. And the nadi is terminating in the nostril. And from the nostril, the air is flowing. So the swar is not crisscrossing. It is the nadi that is crisscrossing. Okay. okay. Yeah. Pital Kothari has asked first, you said sleep on left side and then mm -hmm. activated side. Please explain this. Uh, I didn't get that. Sleep on the left side then. And then sleep on the active side. No, no. If you are insomnia, if you are, if you cannot sleep and if the thought patterns is way too much, then you turn to the active side. I have written in case of insomnia. So otherwise then sleep on the left side? Otherwise sleep on the left. Because sleeping on the left will activate the right nostril. The right nostril activation helps in preventing digestive disorders, respiratory disorders, and heart attacks. Okay. What if we need to enter with right foot, which is considered auspicious? Yeah, that's the swar. See, it is a matter of belief. If you have to enter with the right foot, then activate the right nostril and then enter. Then you will be in alignment with the cosmic flow of energies. Okay. Somebody has said I've lost my smell. What do what to do? Any remedy? Activate the muladhar because the sense of smell is associated with the muladhar. So uh, balance your chakras. Is the time given for not eating common for everybody? Yes, everybody, because that is the Sandhikal. That time you should not even step out from home for work also. Either leave home and enter meditation. Muladhar can be activated through meditations. And uh, Uska Bijakshar uh, excuse me, uh, Sandhikal time is by 45 minutes, like 11.45 to 12.30 or in the evening. What will be the time? Huh? Sandhikal, Sandhikal time. Sandhikal morning is uh, 11.40 to 12.20. Evening, which is our Chandrodaya's time, hota hai na, Surya Astar Chandrodaya's time, hota hai, half an hour. That changes. So approximately what is the time you're looking at? Half an hour. 15 before, 15 after. Okay. That you will have to do, see the daily panchang. Okay. Hmm. Any other questions? Anybody has? Or rather 24 minutes before and 24 minutes later. Rizal, this one more last question. Yes, please. Kaval. From Kaval, uh, you want me to read it? Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, so Kaval from T8 has asked, a friend has lost her sense of taste after COVID. Can it be helped in any way through SWAT technique? No idea. Basically, sense of smell is associated with the Muladhar Chakra. So maybe if she starts practicing and starts working on the Muladhar, she may, act, she may regain her sense of smell. Swar, right, uh, when that is the in the right nostril, study difficult subjects. And when in the left nostril, 
study languages and creative subjects. I... Are there I any books on uh, this topic? Shiv Swarodai. And uh, there are quite a few books. Swar, uh, you, if you Google it, you will find a lot of books on this. Yeah, Anurag mentioned... has mentioned the names of the books as well. Anurag on has the chat box. Yeah, Swaryog, Shiv, Swaro, they are books. Archana has raised her hand. Archana? Yeah, actually, I did type it on the chat. So uh, now again, I'm breathing from the right side. Is it quite normal to have your breathing not shift to the other nostril? My question too. See, when you continuously breathe from one nostril, this is an indication that something is not right within the body. If you're continuously, in case of uh, diseases, the nostrils are impaired. The flow of nostrils is impaired. So you, you need to be very conscious. If the left is flowing for long, then you uh, stop it. The uh, stop the flow from the left and activate the right. So once you consciously start doing it, it will follow its pattern. And when the flow is impaired, it is also an indication that our chakras are not in balance. So once we start the practice of meditations and uh, spiritual practices, the chakra as the chakras get balanced, the flow automatically gets balanced. Okay. So what would you say is a normal period? Like, okay, two uh, you said 60 to 80 minutes. Yes. Maybe after one 60 to 80 minutes, the second 60 to 80 minutes, and if it goes on, or just a two session of 60 to 80 minutes. No, no, I'm, no. See, during the day, the left nostril is more dominant. During Yes. And during the and night, it's in the right. Left, the right nostril is more dominant. Yes. So this is an ideal situation. So now but I need to observe None of it us are in that ideal state of health. 60 to 80 minutes alternation is a very ideal situation. Done. Got it. But if, what if my left nostril is uh, dominant and I go for a jog or for a walk or something? So then uh, I do I activate my right nostril yes. at that point of you time? You should activate your right and then go. And then go? Yes. So when, when I step out of the house, probably I will step out with my left foot because my left nostril is dominant. But dominant. then but then once I start walking or something, then I should activate my... No. See, that is that you can do it that way also, but it will take you 10 to 20 minutes to activate. Oh. Immediately to activate will not happen. It will not you step out of the house and you will activate. Snap of the fingers may hota hai, but it will take you years to reach there. Okay. Any physical activity, if you are doing it in the Surya Swar, it will bring you more benefits. So you start 20 minutes before you step out of the house. If it takes you 10, then you can start in 10. Individually. Okay, got it. Any other questions anybody has to ask Swati? I think that's about it. Everybody is yes. very, very interested. Yes, I have a doubt. Okay. Uh, is it available to change the nostrils uh, many times in a daytime? According to our need? Yes, you can. It will not because you were... I didn't get that. Uh, will it, will it yes. disturb our? No, it will not. Thank you. Okay, I think this was a simply wonderful, wonderful, and very interesting session. Something that. I think most of us have not heard of all these years of our lives. And uh, thank you so much, Swati. And may I now request uh, Lakshmi to propose the official vote of thanks? Yeah. Thank you, Bijal. Thank you so much.
So dear friends from Tangent Club International, 41 Club India and Tangent India, a heartful thanks to each one of you for being with us on this session for the past one hour. A breath full of thanks to you, to our holistic teacher, Swati, and her supportive better half, Anurag, for the insightful session on Swad Yoga. I've never heard of this before and I really, uh, you know, brought in a lot of thoughts into my mind. Heartfelt thanks to Tangent India Fellowship Convener Vijan for seamlessly orchestrating a fantastic Zoom event. Your dedication and hard work shown through making it a memorable experience for all of us. Technology has come into our life at the right time through the right person, Jay Shri, through the perfect medium called Zoom. Thank you, thank you, thank you, dear Jay, for the Zoom connection. Thank you, Munira, Skill Sprint Convener, for all the assistance you have provided for this event. Once again, a big thank you to our partners and looking forward to more engaging collaborations in the future. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Swati. Really, it was a wonderful session. Uh, I was in and out, but I was listening completely. I had another meeting, so this could not be avoided. Very sorry for that. But it was such an interactive session, and I would definitely go through the this thing. I'm just waiting to go through the recording and uh, take it once more. So nice of you. Thank you so much. We look forward to more sessions with you. Thank you. Now, people have asked on the chat whether recording is available. The answer is yes. So do reach out to your friends who have invited you for the session today and ask them for the recording. Ram Guruji, it is, it is creating a curiosity in me to come and talk to you more about all this in Surat. Swati ji, namaskar. Namaste. Bahut badiya. Aap the yaan pe, mujhe bahut achcha laga. Nahin, nahin, bahut hi, he was bahut there bahut right from the beginning. बहुत बढ़िया बहुत बढ़िया स्वाति जी बहुत कुछ सीखने को मिला आज आई कैन ओनली प्रे दैट श्री कृष्णा विल ब्लेस यू टू टेक दिस मैसेज फॉरवर्ड टू मोर एंड मोर पीपल गॉड ब्लेस यू गॉड ब्लेस यू थैंक यू एंजल फॉर द वंडरफुल सेशन थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Swati. Thank you, so Swati. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, Swati Ji. Beautiful session. Thank you, Swati Ji. Thank, Thank you, you, Swati. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here.